this is a Bark River sheath, uh, just out of the box. Well, not just out of the box, I should say, um, before it's been conditioned. I have actually done what I suggest uh, with all other sheaths before you condition it. It's also the reason that I don't do their EPP protection, because I want to essentially form um, a kind of a housing, if you will, for the knife. So the knife that was in here, thanks to Chuck Nunface, I found out that the Bushcrafter series is back. This is Bark Rivers that is half an inch longer. It has this nice little cut in for a fire steel and it's a Scandi Vex. So it's basically Scandi, but it's full convex down to there. Not full convex, but convex. So this, I've been really wanting one of these and I'm glad that, it, that I got this. So thanks Chuck for that one. And yeah, I really wanted to put this up against the DBK Bushcrafter too, because the DBK Bushcrafter is a shorter knife. This is a little bit longer. This particular one is red and black micarta. Don't know how well this is showing up, kind of in some dark light here. But what I will say is before I condition the sheath, or I, I always want to basically, and I suggest putting the knife in, basically the location where you essentially want to form it. And for a couple weeks, I will just, every day, I'll just kind of, Rub my finger along there just gently, not to, you know, really wear it down. But what it does is you'll notice then as I take that out, it, it creates a nice little locator, if you will. And that's why I don't do their EPP protection because I want to build this in. I'm glad that I did this with my first one, kind of just out of ignorance. Uh, this was my first Park River. So actually we'll show a quick sampling of, so this is the unconditioned and this is a multi-conditioned. So over three years I've, Condition it a few times and it's getting just kind of that nice coloring on it. I did use mink oil one time, but now I just actually use Ovenoffs, um, the LP. This is pretty, the, the heavy duty LP, I think it's essentially like a beeswax base, but I will go ahead and, and um, slap that on at the end of this. But it's just my suggestion. Do you need to? No, but it's, it's very not much a nice feeling when you're putting your um, fixed blade away to have that little locator, or, or I should say that little pocket where it just kind of fits right in. You know, if you were going to go ahead and use your knife upside down, you know, not a lot of people will use a leather knife if it doesn't have a clasp. But this one, even three years later, it did sl slide down about a half an inch. So I wouldn't really trust it for going down or, or going in upside down. Like I said, you can see where it actually does slide out. But just for putting it away, you know, when it's by your side, it, you kind of know exactly where it's going to go. A nice slip too. So that... I will, uh, that, that's kind of cool, but there is a knife for which this actually becomes very important. I did buy a second Creeley Blades Mako, and I had not done this with the, my first Mako sheath. And so it kind of, there's a little bit of a formation there you can see, but it's, I just don't feel the most secure on this one. Again, this is kind of an EDC in your pocket sort of one, but I do want to actually be able to carry it, um, not necessarily inside my pocket. And so what I've done on this one, again, an unfinished, is same thing. For just a few weeks, you know, just do it for a few weeks. Just put it in there with your raw leather. And, and then, again, just do a little bit of rubbing there. And it'll just kind of cre create a good formation. Why it's so important on this knife? Because this Curly Blades Mako is so ridiculously sharp. Sharpest knife I've ever handled in terms of just top to bottom. It's when I did my initial review of, of the other model in Magna Cut, this one is in the LC 200 N. Um, well, Bowler N 690, I think, but it's effectively, yeah, Bowler N 360. That's what it is. It's essentially the analog to LC 200 N. That one, it's so dang sharp, it can just cut apart threads and stuff. And I've, I've heard from other people who just kind of were a little bit more, I won't say cavalier, but just you know, not as careful in, in creating this pocket, receiver pocket. Um, that it actually just sliced right through the, th the threading there. And that, that could be kind of a safety issue. So, you know, is it a huge deal? No, but definitely something that is recommended. And you can kind of, in fact, I'll show these side by side. So this is going to be conditioned. This is going to be not. I'll go ahead and condition both of those um, because they have been in their sheaths for about a month now. Um, yeah, it's been maybe just over a month. I don't know. I'm losing track in time as, as I get old. But I, you know what? That's why I recommend doing it is so that you have that nice little pocket that when you're putting your knife away, it just kind of fits fits right into it. Not like it's nowhere as secure as like a Kydex, but certainly much better than you know if if it was just basically 
channeled, you know, or just, you didn't have that. So hope this was of use. If it was, I appreciate the like and subscribe, and I will go ahead and tack on at this point, the actual conditioning.